Check one, two, amen, church. Welcome out to our Sunday night service. Amen, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Why don't we stand? Let's clap our hands. We're going to sing this song, Rock of Ages. Sing, there is no rock. And there is no rock. And there is no God like our God. No other name, no other name. He's worthy of all our praise. The rock of salvation. That cannot be moved. Proving himself to be faithful and true. There is no rock. There is no God. Sing that from the top. Sing, there is no rock. And there is no rock. And there is no God like God. Come on, church. You're going to sing this line by yourselves. Amen. Let's sing that loud. Sing the rock of salvation. That cannot be moved. He's proving himself to be faithful and true. There is no rock, and there is no God like ours. Let's sing that chorus, Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages. Jesus is the rock. Rock of Ages. Sing, Jesus is the rock. Rock of Ages. Jesus is, there is no rock. And there is no rock. There is no God like ours. Amen, church. We're going to sing that from the top. And there is no rock. And there is no God like our God. So no other name. He's worthy of all our praise. The rock of salvation. That cannot be moved. He's proven himself to be faithful and true. There is no rock. There is no God like ours. Raise your voice in this place. Sing Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages. And Jesus is the rock. Rock of Ages. What's his name, church? Jesus is the rock. Rock of Ages. And Jesus is the rock. There is no rock. There is no rock. There is no God. Sing there is no rock. There is no rock, there is no God. Amen, church, we're going to sing that through one more time. There is no rock. Amen, let's give God praise in this place, church. Amen.
sing all I have with you and all I have within me and Lord I give you praise and the door is in you Lord, I give you my heart. And Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. And I live for you alone. Every breath that I take. Every moment I'm away. Lord, have your sleep. Lord, I give you. And Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. And I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Lord, have Amen, church. We're going to sing that through one more time. Lord, I give you. And Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, and I live for you alone, and every breath that I take, and every moment I'm away, and Lord, have your way. Amen, church, why don't we give God praise in this place? Father, we worship you, Lord God, we pray. service up in a word of prayer and if we could continue to pray for uh, that young child that I mentioned this morning for a young Roman and pray for Isaac Potiphar again for a sp uh, speedy recovery and that he would uh, be healed pray for Missy pray for Mary Angel uh, let's also remember our baby church uh, Kenny and Seal and for God's blessing on them and continued favor and uh, let's believe God for lasting fruit in their church and in our congregation too. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray. When we subside, I'm going to ask uh, Compton to lift up his voice, seal our prayers tonight. Father, we worship you this evening. We give you thanks. We give you praise. And God, we bring you our hearts. We bring you our cares, our needs. Lord, we put before you these, God, precious people, God, for young Roman, Lord, for Isaac. We pray for their healing, Lord God, a complete recovery to both of them. We pray for Missy. We pray, Father. Father God, for Mary Angel, for Sonny, for Elizabeth, for all those, Lord God, who, God, suffer, God, with sickness. God, deliver them, Lord, in Jesus' name. We lift up Kenny and Seal. We pray for you to bless them, the church in Mount Druitt, the congregation there. Let there be lasting fruit there and here, my God, and have your way in this service tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are the God of wonders, Father, the God of all, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you know beginning to end, Lord God. Father, you know, Lord God, what is going to happen, Father, Lord, and we know, Father, you have the victory, Lord God, that we have already won the battle, Lord God, and I'm praying tonight, Lord Father, help us to stand in that victory, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to put on the full armor of yes, God, Lord. Lord. God. Lord, to put on, Father God, all that we need to, Lord God. We thank you for the God of praise, Lord God. Father, we worship you in this place, Lord. We're asking, Father, you inhabit the praises of your people tonight, Lord God. Father, help it, Lord God. Father, anoint this service, Lord God. Anoint our pastor, Lord God. Help him, Lord, to minister into our lives, Lord God. To touch our hearts, Father God. To help us see change, breakthrough, Lord God. Chains broken, Lord God. Lives set free, Lord God. We're praying for the miraculous tonight, Lord God. We're expecting mighty things, Lord God. We come, Lord God, knowing, Lord, that you are the God of wonders, Father. And we worship you and you alone, Lord God. And all God's people shouted amen hallelujah why don't you turn welcome one another let people know god's going to speak to them tonight hallelujah amen 
Hallelujah. Well, a good evening to all of you. Great to see you here tonight. And uh, we're going to have another good service. Uh, appreciated uh, this morning service and gathering together and uh, felt God's presence there. And we're going to uh, just uh, continue in that this evening. Uh, remember tomorrow, uh, men, uh, 6.30 p.m., we're going to get together, talk about some, some uh, things that make us better men, and that'll be at 6.30 p.m. Wednesday night, we'll have our midweek service at 7.30 p.m. And Friday night, of course, the home Bible study groups. Amen. That's all the announcements. Let's give God the praise as our ushers come this evening. Jesus, we worship you, we praise you, we thank you for your grace, we thank you for your mercy. Recently, uh, this is in the last week, uh, I believe that uh, there was uh, an, um, uh, news where they said they're going to put the, the Aboriginal flag on top of the Harbour Bridge and, uh, and uh, it, the, the cost to do that, to keep it up there year, every year would be a cost of $25 million. And so that's a lot of dough to put up a flag on a bridge and a lot of people will say that's worth the price, you know, and, and, and they have the, you know, that uh, the, that's what ought to be done. And I'm not here to, to say yay or nay, but you know what? We're trying to plant another flag. Amen. We're trying to plant the kingdom of God, the, the flag of the kingdom of God here on this earth. And to do that, it costs. And so uh, you know that. I know I don't have to preach a whole sermon on taking an offering, but every offering counts every time we get together every time we come together to worship it counts we can't rely on yesterday we have to continue to 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 worship god in the way he's called and i encourage you to uh, offer your tithes your offerings and uh, you know world pledges all of those things it all counts because it costs to plant the flag of god here upon the earth and uh, do appreciate those who are faithful to do that regularly remember you can give by direct deposit or cash and uh, uh, the lord bless you as you give tonight i'm going to ask joe can you pray over the gift and give over yeah. yes lord Amen. There's power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There was power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power. Precious blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you for that song, team. And uh, we're going to open up again to Ephesians chapter 6 and we'll go to our text. Uh, some of you probably have memorized it from verse 10. Uh, we will, the whole thing is verse to, down to verse 18, but we'll just read to verse 15 tonight. And uh, as a means of review, you know I've already. Uh, covered the ground of the belt of truth that we are to be a people of the truth we are to be a people who uh, know the book get into the book called the bible and we 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 are familiarized with that and uh, when we when we do that it stops um, deception it stops lies uh, from overtaking our soul our mind um, and uh, it's a great the, the thing that binds all the other bits of armor together. This morning I spoke about the breastplate of righteousness and we don't want to walk in our own righteousness because that, that, that doesn't uh, cut it for God, that actually our righteousness disgusts God, but His righteousness He gives to us and we're able to fend off the condemnation and the, the assaults of hell, the accusations that come against our lives because we've got His uh, breastplate of righteousness upon us amen and so tonight we're going to continue with the third bit of equipment that we as christian soldiers need to kit up with and that is to have the proper footing and uh, i want to show you again the roman soldier picture if we could do that okay uh, and you see there that the soldier here is uh, wearing some uh, sandals 
And um, um, are you able to uh, give a bit of a close-up of the next image by any chance? Yep. And there's a, a, a replica there of some Roman sandals and you notice there uh, their leather straps and underneath you see their footing. They're not Nike shoes, right? They're not your, uh, your common shoes. But for what they could do in that day, and they would put those uh, hobnails, they call them, on the bottom and that would be the grip that they would have. But every soldier had to kid up by putting on these sandals and they had to make sure they put them on right because they were going to use them uh, in what they were involved with. So let's go to our text tonight and we'll talk more about that in a minute. The Bible says here, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand." Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. So let's look at number three here of our series, and that's the soldier's shoes. Footing is critical when it comes to any contest. Okay, If you're involved in any kind of competition, contest, some battle, some struggle, your footing is critical. Uh, and uh, when it comes to boxing, there's a few uh, who like boxing here, uh, and uh, it was good fun when I ha was having a bit of a go at it, but good boxers spend hours skipping and conditioning themselves so that movement comes easy for them. You're not going to be a good boxer if you can't move around and have uh, uh, you know, agility and speed in the ring you have to have an ability to 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 have the right footing uh, to carry themselves uh, to be able to attack their opponents as well as being able to respond to the uh, attacks coming their way your footing your ability to correctly be positioned is critical to 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 overcoming in the contest in wrestling again the positioning of your feet would give you leverage to pin and hold your opponent or to be able to get out of holds that they might have you in. It's your footing many times that's going to be the difference. Uh, when I used to play cricket, the better batsmen got their footing right. They knew where to put their feet in relation to where the ball was going. As fast as that ball was coming, being in the right place at the right time, having your foot there in the right place, your feet in the proper posture, it was the difference between getting runs or getting out many times. Uh, but, you know, even before playing at any ball, just like with any, any kind of sport, the kind of shoes they wore were important, right? So it uh, depends what surface you had and uh, you needed to have proper grip. You couldn't go out and play uh, the sport in a pair of thongs. You'd be an idiot to do that, right? You'd be crazy to go out there and face the, you know, these, these uh, red balls coming at you at speed in a pair of thongs because you know where the bowlers would be aiming. They would be going for them and you had to make sure you had good solid shoes that had grip on them and the proper shoe wear and the proper foot positioning was vital. You all know before you go anywhere, I don't know about you, but the last thing I put on is often my shoes. Everything else gets put on and then the last thing, just got to put my shoes on, hun, and then that's how it goes. Uh, your shoes are important to your preparation before you go out and face the world, before you go out and do any business. And as it is in life with sport with going out so it is in living for God your preparation is vital and so if you look at the Roman soldier's shoes again have a look at it again right you see there there's straps and you see there there's nails that this was specific footwear for the soldier 
They, it wasn't like, oh, I want to wear these shoes. I want to wear those shoes. Uh, uh, they had to strap those things on properly and uh, the notice there, the hobnails underneath them, um, it would give them better footing for battle. They would often have to march for many, many miles leading into the battle, perhaps a 30-mile march, sometimes a 50-mile march. I mean, they could be marching all night and if their footing wasn't good, if their footwear wasn't good, then they'd already lost the battle. Even before they got to the battle, it was over. It was like, bro, you, you're incapacitated. You can't even stand. You can't, you can't even function. You couldn't even turn up perhaps, right, because of the footing aspect. Uh, and so they would march into battle many miles and then they would have to fight. And then they would have to march back home, <laughs> right? So... The footing was critical and many times the terrain was very rugged. They're walking over, uh, not good, nice, smooth footpaths, but rocky ground, uh, ground with thorns in it, ground uh, with all sorts of uh, sharp bits, uncomfortable bits. So the footing was important. Those sandals had to be strapped on right or it would make for a very uncomfortable journey and perhaps stop them from making the march or cause them to lose their footing in battle and lose their life. So think here, okay, we can take that down. Think here, as we're talking about shodding on the gospel of peace, what we're talking about is preparation tonight. That there is a preparation that you and I as soldiers must take if we're going to fight a good fight of faith. If we're going to be able to withstand the enemy's assaults, right? And notice how many times the Bible, then Paul says, to stand in the evil day, to stand against the enemy, to stand. You're going to need your feet. You're going to have to be prepared for the battle. And uh, it involves, as I said, preparation. To fight a good fight, a good fight against the enemy, one must be prepared to stand and withstand the forces of hell, you have to anticipate what's coming up ahead and make provision for it, right? So it's not kind of last minute, oh, caught out stuff, but you have thought about things, you've prepared yourself and you are ready for what's coming. Amen. Uh, you know, tonight uh, we, we have the second state of origin and uh, one of the famous uh, state of origin players in recent times is Billy Slater and he's now the Queensland origin coach and he's arguably the best fullback ever that uh, uh, ever graced the field and there's a lot of contenders for that but the guy was amazing and I, I, I didn't like him as a player because he always stopped tries you know that our team were going to score um, but he he was an amazing player and he knew how to read the play right he'd be in the back somewhere and he could read the play and see w who was going where and where the ball was going and somehow he was always on the spot to stop the try to make the tackle uh, to get the ball and not only just save the day but many times he'd be able to counter-attack and turn a, a, a defense into an attack and that's what made him such a great player he would read the play he would be prepared he was one step ahead of where everybody else was and he would move accordingly hopefully he doesn't pass that in the coaching uh, to Queensland tonight sorry plug for the blues sorry <laughs> every morning think about this before we go to work we have to make some kind of preparation we have to make preparation before we head into the day we have to get up at a certain time don't we we have to wear certain clothing we have to uh, put on or have with us certain equipment we have to travel a certain way to get somewhere by a certain time, right? And we've got to do certain things and get things done, right? All in an allotted time. And the well-prepared person has thought ahead before the alarm goes off, right? It's not going to be a good day if you haven't thought about what you're doing for the day. The alarm goes and then you, you're starting to clutch for, oh, what am I going to do? Uh, where's my clothes? Uh, uh, where's my tools? 
um, uh, what train was I going to catch or who, how, was, how was I going to get to work? If you haven't already worked those things out before the beginning of the day, it's, it's going to be a tough day. It's going to be one of those days, right? And so we know that it's like that in the day-to-day of life, right? But it's true in being a good soldier for Jesus Christ that if you just kind of wake up each day without thought, without preparation to the battle that is coming your way, it's, it's going to be a challenging day. The Bible says that Noah moved with godly fear and prepared an ark for the saving of his household. He knew what was coming up ahead. And because he knew what was coming up ahead, he got busy preparing and he got his family busy preparing and they were all involved preparing for a day that was coming up ahead and it was going to be a long time ahead but they knew if they didn't act in the now they wouldn't be ready for it and here Noah graces the the pages of scripture he's he's there in the pages of scripture as someone who's a man of faith and a key element was he knew how to move with godly fear and prepare not only for himself but for his household are you aware that tomorrow is on its way Another day of challenge. You're going to need a fresh supply of God's Spirit in your life. You can't just operate on what you, you ran on today. You need a fresh touch of God. Can I get an amen tonight? Will you sleep early enough? Be mentally determined enough to get yourself up for prayer and, and have a time in God's Word. Or is it going to be a late nighter where it's like, don't worry about it, I'll just, <laughs> right? You see, you want to get up in the morning and pray, you have to prepare the day beforehand. You have to be thinking, this is what I'm going to do. And set the alarm clock accordingly. Most of you know what time our services are on. I wonder, I guess when you thought of this morning service, how many of you actually had a good sleep so you could concentrate during Bible hour and concentrate during the actual sermon, right? If you don't get a good sleep Saturday night, well, guess what your Sunday night's going to be like? And I know about fellowship. I know about staying up late. I, I know all of those things. But, but the point is, is Sunday's coming. God wants to speak. Are you ready for the, for the Word of God? Are you going to be ready to hear? Or is it just going to be, I'm just going to survive, get through the motions and just say, yeah, I got to church, Pastor. <laughs> What did you get out of church? I don't know, but it, I think it was good. <laughs> you know, the altar comes and everyone's heads bowed us straight away because they've just been struggling to keep their eyes open because Saturday night was like a, a three o'clock set. What, what are you doing at three, up three in the morning? You know, and, and uh, how's that going to affect you the next day? Think about that. You've got to prepare. Um, uh, we have good intentions. Yeah, I'm going to get there on time, but you know, do, do we know what clothes we're going to wear the next day do, when we're going to come to church? Do we know? Have we got those things in order? Uh, uh, um, uh, you know when prayer times are on. Are you going to come prepared? No, I'm a good disciple of Christ. I'm going to join in prayer. I'm going to march in step and begin to, to lay hold of God. Am I going to prepare for that? Or is it, oh, well, I know, the se- I know it starts at 6 o'clock, so I just get there at 6. What about the prayer time? Doesn't that count? Isn't that important to you as a Christian to allow your heart to be plowed and open to the Spirit of God and by the time you get in the service, it's a different service if you've prayed. You're going to get a whole lot more out, out of it. You know worship is going to happen. Are you prepared to give him the highest praises? You know an offering will be taken. Have you prepared your tithe or an offering at least for the service at hand? Or is it, again, I did that yesterday, I did that last week. It doesn't count this time. Every time we get together it counts and requires a conscious preparation that we give our best for the moment. Amen. For that moment of worship. Some of you have a ministry role. Are you prepared for it or is it always the last minute dash? If you organize people, you can't just do the last minute things. Uh, you know what it's like 
when you're single, it's easy to move yourself around, right? It's just you to look after. You get married and now suddenly you have to, we have to work this out together so we can, uh, you know, flow together and get to church on time and do the things of God on time and accomplish things in life on time. And then when you have a family, you've got all these other little, little ones around you. Now you have to organize them. So the more people you have to organize, the more you have to be prepared, right? And you have to think ahead. And if you organize people and you have some kind of leadership role, you have to give adequate time to help them prepare. And so that means you have to be even more prepared than they need to be. Uh, and so uh, we give a church calendar out. I prepare one and I, I put it out a couple of weeks at least, sometimes uh, several months. Uh, uh, now that we're beginning to plan and COVID is not affecting us as much, I can plan things ahead and, and we can have a bit more of a vision of what's going on. And what's that for? To help you and I prepare for what's coming up uh, in the house of God, what God's doing. Um, you'll know when certain outreaches are on, when certain special events are on, rallies, men's discipleship, impact teams, conferences, and there's no guesswork because there it is. It's there. You're informed. You're told. Uh, and the issue is, do we make preparations to be involved, to get involved as much as we can be? We all know God has called us to be witnesses for Jesus. Can you say amen to that? Right? God calls us to be a witness for him uh, in the day to day. But how many of us are actually prepared and ready to share our faith? when we come across a person that we're going to be there for a bit of time uh, will we share our faith are we prepared spiritually are we prepared uh, in our uh, in our selves to witness to them romans 10 15 says how shall they preach unless they are sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace who bring glad tidings of good things and so shutting our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace ultimately leads into you being a good witness for jesus christ right you being a good example a good testimony someone who can speak for jesus and get that message out to others and it takes preparation to do that many of you know also that there are certain temptations that are going to come your way Right? Each of us has our unique set of uh, strengths and weaknesses. The devil knows that and he will target your weaknesses. He'll bring temptations uh, that are uh, custom made for you. Are you prepared for, for what he does? Are you ready for it? Right? He's going to come. He's going to try and find you in your weak spot, in your weak moment. And so when he comes, those temptations, they're like incoming missiles. But have you prepared? Have you got a, a bunker of safety that when the missile's coming your way, have you got an out when the temptation comes? Have you thought ahead and said, how am I going to tackle this when he goes for this particular shot here? And I remember, again, this is a, just a cricket here, but I remember that there were certain... Uh, deliveries that I would get from bowlers and I would have to make sure if it comes at my head I'm going to do this <laughs> right or if it comes uh, uh, you know up at this side of me I'm going to have to make sure that I back away and not do this and and, and so uh, the idea is you're giving forethought to what's coming if it comes like this and I'm going to respond like this if it comes like that then I'm going to respond like that right that's what all the practice and the training in sports is all about is is you are rehearsing your motions and your movements so you don't lose so you don't cop a blow and we're supposed to be doing that in the battle against the forces of hell right temptations will come have you got an out have you got not only an out have you got that escape plan in place have you got some counter, some kind of counter attack measure because it's not just about getting out the way. That's the first step. 
but it's what am I going to do in return? If I'm being attacked in this way, what am I going to do to show that I'm not just going to be a doormat and just sit here and wait to just defend things? I have to hit back. I have to attack. When the devil attacks you and assaults you, what are you going to do to say, devil, you don't intimidate me. You, you attack me, you assault me, you, you, you do these things. Well, what are you going to do in return? How are you going to step up the battle and throw a few blows back? What are you going to do? Again, preparation is involved here. And often where the devil wants to hit you, you can turn that into a strength by turning it around uh, in God's way. You know, you might feel depressed. Here's an example. There's no reason to praise God for. Look, this is falling apart. That's falling apart. That looks like it's blown up and everything seems to be falling apart. What are you going to praise God for? What is the good Christian? The devil's just thrown all these punches at you so you would not praise God and, and live for him and, and glorify God, which is what you're made for. But when you think, no, 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 I don't accept that. Instead, what am I going to do? I'm going to praise him even louder. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to shut me up devil. I'm going to praise God even I'm going to be even more vocal I'm going to raise my hands higher I don't feel like praying you might think that it, what, why pray for come on you've been in there for five minutes that's enough that's, that's, that, God's heard you you don't have to go on what are you going to do are you just oh, okay alright I'm tired spiritually tired no, no, you've got to put it to the devil. I'm going to pray some more. There's more people to pray for. There's more situations that need the grace of God. Don't give up after five minutes. Push it through. And I'm not talking to the new believer here. I'm talking about, yeah, many of you have been here for a long time. You've got to be able to learn to stretch yourself to, to maximize the, the hit we can put on the devil, again, this is preparation. We're not just trying to survive a day and, and just, devil, leave me alone, leave me alone. We're trying to sock it to him as well. That's the best form of defense. And, uh, and so our footing is important. Are we prepared to put it back? Again, maybe the devil's hitting you in your pocket. So, man, what's going on here? Why, why is there there's holes in my pocket? What's going on? Well, you know, you got to think, how am I going to counterattack? Are you tithing? Are you giving? Right? You, say, you know what? The devil doesn't want me to give anything. I'm going to give even more beyond what I had planned. Again, what are we doing? We're assaulting the kingdom of darkness. We are making a statement of faith that we will... Uh, 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 not just be, uh, you know, these little uh, cowardly soldiers, but we're going to be aggressive and take forth the kingdom of God. Temptations will come your way. You have to learn to be able to uh, work with that and avoid those, take the escape plans. At the same time, you've got to learn to be able to land some back on the enemy see the overriding issue is whether you will prepare yourself to march in beat with your battalion with your local church with the great fellowship that you and i are a part of and with the commander in chief who is the lord jesus christ who's in charge of this place he's in charge of our fellowship he's in charge of our local churches He's in charge of this local church. And we are, as we walk in, in step and in unity, marching to the same drumbeat that he, he offers to us, then we will be effective and, uh, and uh, overcome our enemy. What a beautiful thing it is to see a regiment of soldiers marching in step. If you ever see a military parade, you know, uh, just have a look at what China like to do, what Russia have liked to do. They get all their soldiers out. North Korea love it. They get as many soldiers as they can out. They've got them marching. They've got all their uniforms on. And they're all marching in step, doing the same thing in the same way. And it looks impressive. And the whole concept is, as these soldiers... Imagine marching, they're marching into battle, marching into war. They're going in, in unity. They're going in, 
right, with confidence that we are together in this. It's not just uh, I'm doing my thing and you're doing your thing and I'm running this way and you're running that way. So that would be chaos. But here is uh, many, many uh, different individuals saying, you know what, we're going we're gonna to do the same thing at the same time in the same direction and we're going to hit the devil and there's a confidence that comes as we march in unity like that. And it's got to be got to do with preparation. Are you prepared? Uh, amen. Uh, such a group will meet their enemies with greater force, greater confidence. Uh, amen. So I want to stress to you tonight: preparation is vital to fighting the good fight of faith. Being able to stand and overcome the enemy, we have to uh, uh, prepare ourselves to be an effective soldier and an effective fighting force for God and to shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace is to be prepared for service to the one who enlisted you as a soldier in the context of the local church he placed you in, right? So we can be prepared. Some of you say, oh, Pastor, I'm hopeless at organisation. Well, when it comes to the things you enjoy, I'm sure you can actually organize yourself. <laughs> Amen? You know, if there's that uh, show or that footy game or whatever it is or, you know, the people are doing this and you want to be there, you know how to get yourself ready and go there. You can do it for the things that you count as a priority. So you can certainly do it for God. And what is critical is that you value the kingdom of God. You value living as a Christian soldier and pleasing him who enlisted you. You value that and you prepare. It takes some vision, right? You've got to think ahead, but that's what God calls us to do. Don't just think for the here and now. There's things coming up your way that you are to be prepared for. Noah moved with godly fear and prepared an ark for the saving of his household. Will you be moved? Will you have the proper footing in preparation to put forth the gospel of peace? I want you to bow your heads tonight. We're going to wrap this up in a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Shotting our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The issue tonight is prepared, being prepared quickly here this evening. Are you prepared for the day where you stand before God? Are you right with God? Are you saved? Are your sins forgiven tonight? Are you walking in His grace? Because that day is coming upon us and we need to be saved need to have our hearts right with Jesus you're not saved maybe you're backslidden maybe you need to give your heart to Christ tonight with an upraised hand I'll see that and uh, we can pray with you I'm not saved pastor I want to get my heart right with Jesus I want to be prepared for that day when he turns up I don't want to be caught unawares is that you young person older person I want to get my life right with Jesus Christ Amen. Changing the call tonight. Christians, we're called to be prepared. Every day has a new set of challenges. Are you thinking about tomorrow? Are you ready for it? Are you ready for what's ahead? Are you thinking ahead for your life? If it's just you, there's less really that you have to arrange. But obviously, you still have to arrange yourself. You still have to prepare yourself. When you get married, there's more to do. There's, there's communication that, that has to happen so you guys can be prepared. When, when you have children, there's even more and you'll have to help each other out to, to, to arrange yourselves to march in beat with the will of God for your lives. Are you prepared? Maybe God's highlighted some issues there, some arenas where, you know what, I can be better prepared in this and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some things differently here. I'm going to uh, uh, tackle these things differently and not just respond uh, on the moment uh, as always. We're going to open this all to give you a chance to pray. You come, find a place to pray. Let God help you where he wants to help you this evening. Hallelujah. Jesus, help us tonight. We want to have, God, the proper footing, Lord. 
We ask for your grace this evening. Bless us tonight. We would, God, be able to read the play of each day. We would be ready, God, for all, God, that hell would throw against us. But not only that, God, but that we would be able to counterattack and be planning attacks ourselves preparing ourselves for battle, not just responding, but taking the initiative. Hallelujah, in the battle, God. Give us grace. Help us in our prayers. Help us in our worship. Help us in our study of the Word. Help us in our coming together. Lord, that we would be marching in unity, in unison. Father, to your drumbeat. Father, Help us to be in step with you and with each other, God. We may be an effective battalion here for you, God. Teach us your ways, God. Open our eyes. Help us to lift up our eyes to see what is ahead. That we may properly prepare, God we would be moved with godly fear as Noah was and make the preparations that need to be made. God, for the saving of souls. We love you and worship you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your wonderful name. Bless your wonderful name, Jesus. Teach us, God. Oh, God, we would be, God, shot at our feet shodden with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Help us in our witnessing every day to be ready, God, to give an account, to give a defense of the gospel, to put forth the gospel seed into the lives of men and women. Let our feet be beautiful because of the message that we take each day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, we glorify you. Amen. Amen. Let's all begin to stand tonight, and I'm going to ask us to finish off singing this song. Josh is playing in the background. We're going to worship Jesus. Amen. Seated above, enthroned in the Father's love, destined to die, poured out for all. God's only Son, perfect and spotless One, and He never sinned and suffered as if He did. And all the Every 
close in a final word of prayer. I'm going to ask Justin to pray and send us with God's blessing. Father, we thank you for this powerful message, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you can equip us tonight with your word, Father yes. God. We're praying, Lord God, 